Good afternoon. Um, today we're going to talk about people pleasing and the dangers of doing that. Um, <laughs> I guess that in a moment. Before I do jump into the topic at hand, let me introduce myself so you know who I am and what this is all about. Um, hi, my name is Barry Selby. I am an inspirational speaker, spiritual guide, love and relationships expert, and the author of the best-selling book, 50 Ways to Love Your Lover, a book for singles and couples, men and women, which I highly recommend. I'll put a link in the comments at the back end so you can check it out for yourself. I am biased. It's my book. Um, and I'm also a, a uh, help women. I also help women create balance in love, life, and business. Um, I'm a passionate champion of the divine feminine, which informs my work with women. Also, why I did these talks starting almost three years ago now, called "Messages from the Masculine Inspiring Feminine Heart," or MFTM is the shorthand for them. In case you're wondering. So today we're episode number 867, I think it is. Yeah, I think it's 867. And I'll talk about people pleasing. And I said in the title roughly some of the lines of when you people please you lose um and also there's an obvious thing you're missing here so i'm going to explain what i mean by that but i want to start setting up some premises first because you may fit one of those possibilities people pleasing is very obvious for some people um or should say people pleasing is very overt for some people where their only way to receive appreciation love kindness compassion any of those things is by people pleasing at least that's the way they're wired and that's a very overt thing. So they'll do things for other people which exhaust them. That's one of the things, by the way. One of the, one of the symptoms and one of the prices you pay for people-pleasing is when you are caught up in the place where you're putting so much out to get something back, you're actually overextending yourself and being worn out. This isn't healthy, as you may have guessed. And I'll get to more of the solutions in a moment. So what that can look like is where you will keep doing for other people, where is, you may even do things for them without even asking. And you never take anything back in return. Um, there's a title of a book that a friend of mine, Brian Wetton, talked to, um, has called, well, no, excuse me, it's not the name of the book. It's one of his favorite phrases where you give, 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 give up. Now, he's talking about that in marketing and sales, but it's true in relationships too and in places of your life where maybe with family members, co-workers, social engagements, etc., where you keep giving, 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 giving until you're worn out and you can't give any more. That isn't healthy. Now, some some symptoms or so to say some indicators you might be down going down this path is where you find yourself at the end of the day feeling drained and worn out another one is where you find yourself in a relationship with people where it seems very lopsided where they're getting all the benefits they're happy they're free they're comfortable and you're feeling less than that to be polite another instance of this is where you're in the place where you feel like you're part of the environment part of the group part of the, what's going on but as soon as they turn their backs, you feel completely disconnected. Because you're only in there because you're giving giving to them so they feel that you're of value to them. And challenge with this, by the way, if you're one that keeps giving, 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 most of the time you're, give, you're around people who keep taking, 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 who don't give anything back. It's kind of a reciprocal arrangement. And it's not healthy. I believe the underlying theme of this, I think of you enough examples, is this paradigm where you're caught in the perception where to get what you want, you have to keep giving. Now, some of this is tied, quite possibly, to childhood patterns, childhood programming, childhood experiences, childhood imprinting. You, you know where I'm going with this. In your childhood, surprise, surprise, you learnt from other people who are the adults around you usually about how a relationship goes. I thought about this before, where we get imprinted at a very young age about the relationship framework that we're going to take on as adults by watching those around us who are our adults when we're kids. Parents, for example. So if you see a relationship between them or between somebody else and them, where there's, a, there's an imbalance of giving and receiving, where it's giving, giving, over giving and completely um, exhausting themselves to do it, you have an association with that and loving. Because we look through the lens at our parents, those lenses, seeing our parents as being the um, exemplars and the models of how love should be expressed. Now, this is not conscious, this is not aware, this is not a choice, this is automatically programmed into your subconscious when you're not even looking. Yeah, that bad. So what's happening is you're taking on the belief structure that you have to keep giving to be loved. That could be one of the programs you took on as a kid. And it's something that I feel is extremely, thanks for the love, by the way, it can be extremely um, subversive, but also subtle because it's under the layers of consciousness. It's not something you're aware of, I know, because I've been there myself. And this paradigm we fall into is a trap where we are run by our childhood beliefs. And it's not even beliefs we're conscious of. It's childhood subliminal programming. 
and this thing about giving and continually giving and giving and giving until you're drained out completely as you may have guessed is unhealthy so my suggestion what I said what I hinted at the title which is not that subtle a hint kind of blatant actually is that giving to yourself may be the way out yes giving to yourself one of the things is that you may have a natural ability to keep giving because it's your natural tendency and some people are built that way they have this desire to serve to give and commit and, and be generous that way I as part of one of my as I can be careful I say this <laughs> it's in my own makeup to be a giver to serve and to inspire other people that's why I keep doing these talks I mean I've given these talks away for three years now that's giving but I don't get drained by it because I get to be filled up at the same time because the truth of the giving is that you can turn the giving around from out there to in here you can actually find ways to give to yourself that actually refuel and rebuild your own self-support I do as I said I do this talks every day now for almost three years yes the desire to contribute to give and to serve you that's why I'm keep doing this to help you um, the only thing in it for me is that I get to um, put out some course of action that you might say yes to <laughs> at the same time I also get a lot of value out of it because what it does for me personally just to be to be transparent is every day I do this doesn't matter what else is happening during the day at one time during the day for sure I'm aligned to my mission these talks are part of my calling and my work in service to the world so by doing these talks every day it's part of my mission that I know I can tap into every single day and in three and in two and a half years I didn't do every day initially but for two and a half years at least I've done these every day because I wanted to do that well I was inspired by my teacher to keep speaking and teaching this out of the world but also selfishly it's for me to refuel myself so I'm inviting you to look at ways you can actually contribute to yourself as well perhaps more than you're doing out in the world because when you start to be selfish this way in a positive way we start to support yourself and give to yourself it actually starts to refuel your ability to serve others it's actually a cycle that works where you're giving to yourself first allows you to give to other people more easily that way you don't need other people to give to you although that's a nice benefit there's a bonus as a gift but you can receive from the overflow because you're not needing them to fill you up this is the this is part of the tools that undermine and and um, disassemble codependence codependency excuse me codependency codependency is based upon a need to get something from somebody else or a need to give something to somebody else for validation for acceptance when you're self-sufficient and self-filling that's not necessary anymore so you basically disconnect disengage and disassemble trappings of codependency the challenge with this <laughs> one of the challenges well one is to keep practicing this keep doing it being aligned being be authentic in this and do that for yourself and I'll give you some tips on, on how to give to yourself as well in a moment but the other part of this is you're now going to become more sensitive to other people who might be trying to do that to you both takers and givers and what happens is you start to have more discernment and more self-regulation so that you say no to things more easily I did a talk um, a few days ago about saying about on oh, no, last week about agreement keeping and about how when you say no to agreements you actually can reframe and actually refuel yourself and take back your own time and your own space your own energy which can be very healthy this is another piece of that which is when you say no to those people who want to take from you to take 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 from you all the time because you realize you don't need to do that because what you realize is there's no benefit to you for that and this is the thing a lot of times we're driven to keep giving and giving all the time to keep expressing and thinking we're to make a difference and add to other people and contribute all the time because some part of our wiring is tied to that when we do that we'll feel that we'll feel worthy or we'll get approved of or we'll be accepted or we'll be liked all those false falsities that we say what you start to discover what you start to realize what you start to learn is that truly truly you are actually self-sufficient already your worthiness let me let's make, make a statement clear your worthiness is already <laughs> that's it a complete statement your worthiness is already meaning that there is nothing for you to do nothing for you to get nothing for you to give nothing for you to talk about to be worthy you are already worthy it's a built-in quality of being in a human body actually it's a built-in quality of being a spiritual being in a human body because who you are is a spiritual being 
I know that for sure. You may forget that, but I know that for sure. If you need reminding, I can remind you of that too. So recognizing that your worth is not based upon how much money's in the bank, how much, how nice a house you have, what car you drive, the people you relate to or where you are. None of that's relevant to your worthiness. It might be relevant to your ego. In fact, it probably is because your ego is based upon external referencing. But when you recognize that who you are and you give to yourself and you fill up your own battery pack, want to a word, first, you discover just how worthy you really are because it reminds you of the truth of who you are. Hmm. This talk's gone over a different path than I planned, but I'm, I'm guessing it's where it's supposed to go. So my encouragement to you, my recommendation to you, is how can you turn that giving around to yourself? How can you be resource-based and resource-filled just by taking care of yourself? It's a choice you can make every single moment to learn, excuse me, to practice, because you already know how to do it, to practice that reflection back into yourself. My self-love guided meditation course, which I'll put a link in the comments so you can check it out, is a disciplined practice. Well, it's disciplined if you take it as a discipline that just takes five minutes every morning, five minutes every evening. It's not long. But what it does is instills in you a practice of giving to yourself. It gives you a place of loving yourself. It gives you a place of, of caring for yourself. Because so many of us are driven, as, as I mentioned earlier, to keep thinking we'll get our love from out there, that we'll keep seeking out there, we'll keep approaching out there, we'll keep expressing out there, and eventually we'll have love back, which is not true. Excuse me, not always true. Sometimes you may get love from out there, but at what price? When you learn that you are your own resource for love, when you practice loving yourself, and again, my self-love guided meditation will help you with that, that's why there'll be, there be a link in the comments, you'll actually remember that the source of love is inside of you. And that any love that comes from out there is gravy, so to speak, metaphorically speaking, of course. The, <laughs> the, love, the love comes from out there is a bonus, it is a gift, it is absolutely um, additive to who you really are, who you already are. I'm giving you some deeper, profound teachings here, I'm realizing, that maybe take a moment to digest. So if you're not getting all the points, you might want to go back and watch from the beginning because I dropped about five truths along the way, roughly, that each one of those would take you about a month to study. Not saying that I'm special, I'm just saying they came through and went, oh, that was interesting, I could talk about that on a whole other topic. But I'm realizing there's a few different profound teachings in here that will help you. Because of which, third link I'm going to put in the comments, I'm realizing they're coming through this way, is I'll put a link in there to have a chat with me. Because if this is starting to provoke things in you or stir things up for you or make you feel a little bit unsettled, good. This is not meant to necessarily make you feel happy or placated, but it is to give you some suggestions and guidance and some steps. If you're not sure how to get there or you find yourself challenged by what I'm saying, I'll put a link in the comments so you can chat with me. And literally is a link for ladies especially to reach out for a conversation with me so it can help you get where you want to go. Relationship-centric, but also about self-supportive centric as well. So you can have what you want and you can do it from a place of wholeness from where you're actually filling your own tanks first from loving yourself first from appreciating yourself first you're seeing a theme here I trust so my invitation to you is to do that to take each step of the day today tomorrow onward where you fill up yourself first you find ways to refuel to reconnect practices you can reach out to me if you want some help in that you just message me and I'll give you some ideas if you got stuck on about what to do for yourself so you can really fuel up from within and then you can go out in the world more easily and you can do it from a place of fullness and wholeness. It's easy to do when you do it, but it doesn't come, um, like I say, it doesn't come from, well, that's not what I want to say it. It doesn't require massive effort, but it does require commitment to yourself. That's up to you. So again, there'll be links in the comments for you to check those out and if you got stuck and you want some help, message me as well. I can help you that way. Um, that's what's coming through. So that's the message for today. This is my daily Facebook Live, in case you hadn't seen this before. I do this every day at 5 p.m. Pacific time on my personal page on Facebook, almost every day at 5 p.m., but every day, period. You can watch me live on my personal page on Facebook, which is Barry Selby. Um, the replays go to my business page on Facebook, where you can watch those. You can like my page to find them there, which is barryselby.author. Um, not always, they don't always show up that way for some reason. Facebook has got a bad habit of not keeping all of them on file there, which is annoying. However, I have a backup plan. So, hey Nancy, nice to see you. So you can find the replays also on my YouTube channel because YouTube is stable in that sense. So I have, um, <laughs> good to see you. 
Um, I'm wrapping up broadcast, by the way, but I did drop about five or six profound truths in the middle of this one, so I do invite you to go watch from the beginning, if you like. So my YouTube channel is Barry Selby as well. All my social media, except for a couple, of, a couple are, are Barry Selby. My, my Instagram is renewed, is, Bar is the real Barry Selby, just to be pedantic. But anyway, on my YouTube channel, which is Barry Selby, there's a playlist called Messages from the Masculine. Please like, please subscribe to my channel and watch those there. You can find them all in reverse order from newest to oldest. And again, links will be in the comments for my book, Self Love Practice, and, a, and reach out conversation with me, my complimentary gift to you. Practice this self reflection first. Practice this giving to yourself first. Stop giving to others first until you learn how to fill up your own tanks first. Lots of firsts in there. You see what I mean? With that, I thank you for watching. Um, take care of yourself. This is one way you can take care of yourself. So I invite you to do that so you actually become more connected to yourself and refueled and restored and renewed. I'm here to help. That's my mission. That's why I do these talks every day. If you want to help more directly, more specifically, more personally, reach out to me. With that, I thank you for watching. I will see you again tomorrow, same time, same channel. Please take care of yourself. I'll see you again soon. Bye.